In this procedure for the worship of the self, whatever article has been mentioned as being necessary for the worship is of the same nature as all others, though the expressions used are different. I'm suggesting here that these articles are our emotions. We tend to split our emotions up into some that are good and some that are not good, some that are spiritual and some that are not spiritual. But we can't do that. We can't do that. We have to accept the whole picture and inquiry into our own emotional condition, which means awareness of our emotional condition at any moment, is worship of the self. There's, there's no point in just having a certain emotional state where you do your spiritual stuff and then for the rest of the day you get on with your usual state. That's not spiritual, that's just self-indulgent. If you're actually interested in spiritual realization, spiritual practice, then it applies at any moment of the day and it applies to any emotional condition. Why should one emotional state be better than another? This is our reality. We cannot actually do spiritual practice when we're in a state of trauma, when we are caught up in some emotional state. So all we can do in such circumstances is to acknowledge that and let whatever trauma we're experiencing, whatever pain we might be experiencing, to work its way out rather than feed it, rather than to react to it and by reacting to it we fuel it we accept it we accept it and we allow ourselves at some point to come back to equanimity and this equanimity is when we're no longer identifying with a, that particular emotional condition one which is painful usually Although, although it needn't be painful, it can be one which is quite exuberant. But which, whatever draws the attention away from itself, it doesn't actually matter what the tone of it is. When the attention is resting, when the attention is resting in itself, then we have equanimity. Equanimity is sweetness itself. And this sweetness is beyond the senses and the mind. Whatever is touched by that equanimity instantly becomes sweet, whatever its description or definition may be. That alone is regarded as worship, which is performed when one is in a state of equanimity like that of space. When the mind has become utterly quiescent without the least movement of thought, when there is effortless absence of perversity. This is when the attention is comfortably resting in itself. Perversity means when the attention wants to turn around and start getting identified with emotional states. So we cannot practice realization without equanimity. Most of the time we're caught up in some emotion or another. We're emotional beings. And when we're caught up, when we're identifying with a particular emotion, there's usually not that much we can do about it from a spiritual point of view. We can do something about it from a psychological point of view to try and calm whatever emotion we might be experiencing. Or we can try and change things a little bit. Yeah, so there's all sorts of coping strategies, basically. But spirituality is not about coping strategies. Spirituality is about acknowledging the truth of our situation. And if that truth is about being caught up 
in some limiting emotional condition. It might be some kind of trauma or it might be titillation. Most of us are driven by some by a need for some kind of titillation. That might be quite uncomfortable to acknowledge. But yes, we do have these uncomfortable emotions. This is what we need to acknowledge. This is what we need to look into. But then if we let it ride, if we don't resist it, if we don't go along with it either, we neither resist it nor go along with it, we can then come back to our equanimity, whereby the attention is no longer focused on that. It's no longer being hijacked by that emotional state and it's comfortably resting in itself. So equanimity is not something you can struggle for because that takes you away from equanimity. Equanimity is always there. It's always something which can be brought back to. Established in this state of equanimity, the wise man should experience infinite expansion within himself while carrying out his natural actions externally without craving or rejection. This craving or rejection applies to whatever emotion is going on. We don't identify with it, but we don't reject it either. And if we're lost in it, if we're lost in this and an emotion, we ride through it and come back to equanimity. Such is the nature of the worshipper of this intelligence. In his case, delusion, ignorance and ego sense do not arise even in dream. Remain in this state, O sage, experiencing everything as a child does. Worship the Lord of this body, the intelligence that pervades it, with all that is brought to you by time, circumstance and environment, and rest in supreme peace, devoid of desire. So, worship the Lord of this body, the intelligence that pervades it, with all that is brought to you by time. Our emotional flow, our emotional patterns, are what, are what is brought to us. This is what we have. This is what we're working with. This is our being. When you're caught up in spirituality, it's very easy to get caught up in self-censoring, sorting yourself out into what is good, what is bad, what is appropriate, what is inappropriate, what is wholesome, what is unwholesome, and so on. But that's not spirituality. Spirituality is equanimity. And if we're not in equanimity, then we can't force it. So we need to be patient. We need to be patient and abide with whatever is happening, accepting it completely, even if it's uncomfortable. Although, this doesn't mean to say that if it is so uncomfortable we shouldn't do something about it. If we've got a wound, we treat it. So we use whatever coping strategy, whatever coping strategies we've got. We just do what needs to be done without adding to the drama of it. And then come back to equanimity when, whenever it's possible. And this is supreme peace, devoid of desire. And it expands, it expands. The more we practice this, the more it happens. <laughs>